So, hello everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. We do have participants from all over the world and I'd like to welcome all of you to our IWA get together, focus on how to create an IWA uh, Young Water Professional chapter. My name is Isabella Spindola. I'm the membership engagement senior officer responsible for the Young Water Professionals community. And we do have an amazing team here today that are going to explain a little bit about this, the chapter community and how you can create and maintain your chapter alive. But before we, we jump to the, to the presentations, I do have some information that I would like to share with all of you. So this event is going to be recorded, as you already noticed, and it's going to be available on demand with the presentation slides and other relevant information that our speakers provided. All the speakers that are presenting here, they're responsible for securing copyright permissions and all their opinions, hypotheses, conclusions, and recommendations are their sole responsibility. Also, please feel free to post your questions uh, in the chat. Also use this function to introduce yourself, saying where you're from, um, if you're part of a chapter, if you are already part of the IWA YWP community. But I will kindly ask that you mute yourself um, because you're not a speaker. <laughs> so we can have all the speakers on camera. And you don't need to share your screen um, and raise your hands. Everything's going to be with us on this. And I do hope that you enjoy our event, our online event today. So besides me as your moderator, we also have Chen Li and Shotaro Goto. Both of them are members of the Young Water Professionals Steering Committee, and they are responsible for the country chapters uh, subcommittee coordination. So they are helping the IWA Secretariat in terms of understanding more about the needs about fr from the chapters and how we can grow and connect this um, community that we have. And in terms of our amazing panelists, we have Anya Eilers from the South Africa uh, chapter. Jake, Jacob Amengor, he's the chair of the YWP steering committee. And we also have Mohamed Anikazan, he's the chair of the YWP Pakistan chapter. So our agenda, this is what we prepared today. We split it, this event in four parts. So really quickly, this is the opening part that we are now. Then Jacob and me, we are going to present about the IWA and it's a young water professional community. Part three will be focused on the country chapters, experiences and membership engagement. And then we have examples from Pakistan, South Africa, China, and Japan. And then we will have a part of discussion and conclusion. And finally, our closing remarks um, and some updates that we have from the Secretariat. Jacob, I hope that you are ready. Yes. Perfect. Just let me know when you want me to move the, your slides. Okay, next slide. Thank you very much. So the International Water Association is an association with 70 year heritage in bringing together professionals from about 130 countries. And um, it serves as a ref international reference and source for knowledge and sustainable water solutions and so support global community to pursue their ambitions and relations to the water-related SDGs. It's also a catalyst for innovation, knowledge and best practices for the sector, external organization and opinion leaders, and provides experience and leadership in transitioning to sustainable water solutions. Next slide. So the IWA runs a five-year strategic cycle, and um, the current strategic cycle is from 2019 to 2024, which has five goals. The first one is engage 
membership. So the IWA will have an engaged membership that is globally representative of the multiple segments, actors, and practice areas of the water sector. The second, the second um, agenda is um, a source for leading edge water knowledge. That is, the IWA will have strengthened its position as an authoritative source and global reference point for water knowledge, addressing and informing on emerging potentially disruptive trends within the sector and the wider world. The third one is a space for professionals to exchange water knowledge. Um, that is the IWA have provided a broad range of professional content and programming that is relevant and widely valued by the water sector. The fourth one is a bridge between research and practice, where the IWA is playing a pivotal role in bridging the gap between research and practice to accelerate the development and diffusion of innovation in the global water sector. And finally, we have a support to implement the SDGs. So the IWA supports and promotes sustainable development goals and strengthen the sector through professional and capacity development so that people and countries can pursue their ambitions with relation to the water-related SDGs. Next slide. Yes, so engagement within the IWA comes in various stages. So where you start with the publications, the partnerships, you participate in IWA activities and online reading. Then from there, you move on to engagement, um, participating in events, presenting, at conferences, chairing um, um, some of these workshops and um, becoming a member, joining the IWA communities. Then you move on to contribute. So you contribute to proposals, new outputs of the IWA community, you write special content, book chapters, blogs, you organize IWA events, you can able to propose workshops, uh, webinars, um, you do peer-to-peer -peer leadership exchange. Then you move on to lead where you become an IWA thought leader or influencer. Um, you can be part of the distinguished um, fellows or fellows community. Um, you become management me members of the specialist groups, then the YWP steering committee and the YWP chapters. So you present IWA nationally or you join the Congresses and pro pro Congresses Program Committee, or there is the IWA Strategic Council too, yeah. So the network members can start with the, can start with the start and engagement um, stages, while the members are able to go on to contribute and lead. Next slide. So currently the IWA has, um, other communities, and this include the governing members, which are the organize, organizations which represent the water professionals in the country, and their mission is to leverage IWA at the national level. So there are about 53 governing members, and they have the national meetings, the governing, but they partake in the governing assembly meeting, and they also overlook the national YWP um, conferences. Then we have the Young Water Professionals Community. Uh, that is for young water professionals that are below the age of 35. And um, there are there are five regional YWP conferences that are organized. And they have they are four to six events, yeah, international events. We have the the distinguished fellows and the fellows community. Um, there are about 53 distinguished fellows in IWA. And there are about 201 fellows. Um, so they lead, they lead IWA member meetings and offer mentorship to the young water professionals. Yeah. Yes, the IWA has um, believes in young water professionals as one of the um, groups of people who can really impact the water um, sector. So they give them the opportunity for their voices to be heard. 
And uh, the vision for this is to develop a strong brand and network that is highly valued and rated by the wider water sector. One that is actively engaged and empowered to contribute to the water, water, water sector solution. And the mission for the young water professionals is um, empowerment of young water professionals to contribute to sustainable water management, which is IWS. And by connecting them, providing them with professional development opportunities, engagement, and recognition. So the Young Order Professionals has um, a 13 member steering committee. Um, we have um, all, all across um, the world. So we have Ashton Impofu from South Africa, who is the vice chair. We have Ines Breda from Denmark, who is the secretary. We have Ludmila Odod uh, from Ukraine and um, Shaten Juma from Congo who are responsible for the events and communication subcommittee. We have, the, uh, we have Claudia Pren and Cognam, who are um, responsible for the specialist groups. We have Dylan Goku and Augustine Landaburu from, um, who are also responsible for the strategic advisory group. Then we have, um, Chelsea Hayward and Young Villa, who are responsible for the career building troop. We have Kian Lee and Shutaro Goto, who are responsible for the chapter coordination subcommittee. So the YWP steering committee represents and lead um, the IWYWP community. They provide advice to the IWA about YWP perspectives for the sector and the association strategy. It also encourages and enhances ways to engage the new generation of water leaders and support professional development of the YWP. So there are YWP um, chapters across the globe. Um, and you can see from the map that um, they are scattered all over, thanks to all of you. Yeah, next slide. Yes, so when you go to the IWA Connect Plus, which is the platform that um, should, has all the community engagement for IWA. You go to the community section, then you go to the young water professional section, you are able to have an overview of all the country chapters that are available. So you just find your country chapter and you join, then you can engage in some of the discussions that go on here. Yes, so for you to be able to have the best experience on Connect Plus, when you go to your profile, you go to um, the edit your profile, then you would have to switch on these opt-ins so that you can receive the notification of what is going on on the uh, platform. Without that, you, you'll, be, you'll be in the dark as to the kind of interaction on engagement that is going on within the platform. So make sure that you go to your um, profile, you update your profile, you switch on all these notifications or opt-ins so that you can receive all the information that is going on on the platform in real time. Yeah, thank you. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there are several opportunities um, for you as a YWP member. So they are the YWP chapters and the governing member committees that you can join and participate in. You are also able to, as I mentioned, the Connect Plus, join the YWP professional group on the Connect Plus, which, has which gives you exclusive access to our monthly recommended professional development readings. Then we have the, the YWP steering committee and subcommittees on communication events and YWP chapters that you can you can join and also contribute to how we shape the future of our YWP community. Then we have um, the organizing committees of events, including the conferences, the workshop, the webinars. You are able to participate in all these. And then we have the connection with senior professionals. The community has a, a range of senior professionals from different backgrounds 
that um, gives you the opportunity to learn from them and also build your own professional career. Thank you. I think <laughs> Yeah. Thank you, Jacob, for, for presenting the, uh, the International Water Association as well as the YWP community that you're the chair of the, the steering committee. So I will try as much as possible to present quick, really quickly this process of creating um, a chapter, a counter chapter. And then we will jump um, with the presentations from the chapter so they can share their their experience um, uh, with this process on this. So uh, some of you might be asking, what is uh, a YWP chapter? So it is a voluntary network of young water professionals and with a minimum of three members on its steering committee being an IWA member. So to become an IWA branded chapter, you must have go through this branding process. And with this branding process, you will create a network that is able to enable regional, national, and local activities, and it is connected with IWA and also to the other chapters that we already have. So it's an opportunity of engagement, but also an inclusion of a more diverse network. And the main objective of the chapter is to attract, serve, and connect with other members from IWA, enhancing this uh, international YWP community that we already have. So the rationality between um, starting a chapter and creating the chapter is to increase the IWA engagement locally and create a structure that is able to uh, have better responses to specific needs of a country, of a region. And why we have uh, an YWA chapter, so for individuals and for countries. So for individuals, you can drive the agenda, you can gain uh, skills, you can use this platform to connect with other members, you can recognize uh, and engage with uh, government members and other members in regional and international spheres, then you can support your country sector, the water uh, sector they have in your country to develop this next, next generation of um, water leaders. You can work together towards this um, empowerment of young water professionals, and you can bridge this gap that we have between a young water professional and a senior professional. So the country chapters, they help us to attract and retain young water professionals to the sector. They connect young water professionals. They help to create opportunities for professional development and leadership development. And they help to increase the profile and the recognitions of young water professionals that are engaged um, within the network. And what is needed to establish a country chapter? So motivation, definitely. Ideas, teamwork, support, time, and enthusiasm. As I mentioned, a country chapter is a volunteer group. So we need all this, um, these aspects these requirements in terms of having and forming a country chapter. So if you are in interesting um, and think about, so should I create a chapter? Should I find other young water professionals in my country, in my region to start uh, a chapter? These are the main steps that we have to, to create a chapter. So first of all, first of it, so do you have uh, already like an interested group of young water professionals that want to join you in this um, in this path? If yes, you can contact me, and then I will put in contact with the government member, the WA government member in your country, and then you will develop with them this all these documents that we needed a lot of paperwork uh, in terms of creating. If we don't have a gem in our country, then I will put in contact with, uh, in this case, Chian and Shotaro, so they will also help us to, to create the chapter. And in case you don't have a group, but you are really keen to create a chapter, 
you can organize an event with your peers in your region, in your country to start gathering their interest in creating the chapter. Another option is that you can always reach out to me, RWA Secretariat, and then we will try to put in contact with other members that we already have in our country. So going to the step-by-step, -step, first you need to develop basic ideas and reach out to the government member to start working in a proposal. So in this proposal, you have to add information, why it is important to have the chapter in, in your country, what are the advanced um, the objectives of having uh, a new chapter there. As soon as you have this ready and approved by your GM, you can send it to me, I'm going to review, and then I will provide feedback and we will work on this document. When you have the proposal ready, uh, you should starting ideas in terms of a work plan and how you will engage your young water professionals within IWA structure. The third step, the third uh, step is once the proposal is approved, you should start working on this constitution and submit it to us. So in the constitution, you're going to inform us about your proposed committee, how is the election going to work, how many meetings you're having um, yearly, and the general activities that your country needed. And we finish the constitution and we go to this work plan. The work plan should fit all the planned activities that you have for our chapter, and then you have to submit it for us. Once we have all the three documents, so work plan, constitution, and proposal ready, uh, I'm going to, to create an agreement and send it to the chapter members uh, for the chair to sign it as well as the GEM. So this process usually takes for four to six months um, and it all depends on the interest and how uh, fast the, the young water professionals are in terms of developing and writing down all the three documents. Once the chapter is approved, I'm going to create the logos, I'm going to create the page on Connect Plus, and the chapter is invited to uh, update all the information on Connect Plus, so they can um, share the updates about events, documents, and engage with other young water professionals that are keen to be part of the chapter. I told you that was really quickly because I really want to highlight the examples from um, chapters that pass it through all this process that I mentioned, so they can provide some insights on it. Hello, everyone. Good morning, good evening, good day, wherever you are joining. And I really hope that you are having a great day or you had a great day. Um, my name is Anik Azam, and I am uh, the country chair and founder for the International Water Association Young Water Professionals Pakistan chapter. Um, and uh, let us talk you through how has the journey uh, been for me and my team when we were there to create a chapter. Can we move on to the next slide? So we'll be going briefly with how did we start. Um, I'll try to set the scene up a bit. Um, I'll try to uh, explain the committees and the rationale that we uh, that we had initially in mind to set up those committees and then the organizational structure. Uh, and then of course, the making the first team is very important because these are the people who are going to be the launch pad of your chapter. Um, and then this system. And finally, it's the process that you have to enjoy the most. Um, it's a bit about me. I lecture uh, at a public university in Pakistan. I'm a PhD scholar and a researcher in atmospheric water generation, which is a decentralized circular way of getting potable water. So yeah, you can count me in as a young water professional for sure. Uh, next slide, please. So how did we start? So uh, interestingly, it was, it was three eyes for us. <laughs> the first one was the ideation. The ideation process is usually easy. It all starts with just looking at a website, looking at other people doing some great work, or for example, joining this meeting. Um, so of course, things don't happen overnight. So we have to ideate it and we should be you know, planning to polish the ideas that we have. And then you have to find one inspiration that is going to you know, get you pumped up, all pumped up, and you have to go out in the world and be ready to, yes, I'm going to write this document. Yes, I am 
I'm willing to do it. So for, for, for me and for us, it was the Ecuador chapter, which was the latest one that was formed. Uh, so I was just going through the blog uh, of International Water Association's website and I just found out, okay, these are some great initiatives that are being taken. And if Ecuador can have one chapter, why can't we have a chapter right now? And then you, all you have to do is just send an email. And then the third I comes in, which is the uh, International Water Association Secretariat. And um, we have International Water Association and we have Isabella in there and she is always there to rescue us. So um, you just write down an email and then there is a, um, a, an exchange of emails and exchange of documents so that you can get a good clarity on why you want to form a chapter. And believe me, this is a process that makes you learn the most even before you have started a chapter. Okay, so um, this is something that you will, this, this whole picture is something that you'll find in the official documents of how to prepare uh, the proposal. Um, so uh, I'm not going to go in depth over it, but these are some of the key points that I, that just came into my mind uh, when I was prepping for this pre presentation. The first thing that you have to go is to go through the literature of the form formation of the chapter. Um, uh, do not try to skip pages because of course, who, who got time for that when you're all motivated, but that's the time to hold your horses and uh, just try to think about, uh, think deeply in the long term, how are you going to make your chapter sustainable? You have to identify the gap, whether it is going to be a chapter starting from scratch upwards, such as us, or is it going to be a chapter already in existence for which you need a brand name? And then you have to talk to the people. Yeah, you are going to make country chapter and there is no chapter with one single person in it. So just go out there, talk to people, tell them ab about it and don't worry, no one is going to, to um, steal the I idea from you. you. You are the first one to pitch it. So of course, do, do not worry about that. Talk to the people and get them on board. Listen to what their interests are. Convince, negotiate, and reform. And you have the first views. The next slide, please. So for the committees, you really have to foresee what you want from your chapter. In Pakistan, uh, we have um, one of the world's youngest pop population with around 68% people who are, who are young. Um, so there is a lot of population who is in the university. So uh, a good way is to start with the universities. And we have had a very good history of well-established chapters uh, of many other think tanks and, um, uh, and uh, other networking bodies in the universities. So this was a reason that we had to keep the university campus chapters in our, in our, in our structure. So we have a steering committee. Uh, in which we have the four members who are the country officers. And then we have the other six members who are the country committee members. Both of these form the country committee. And this country uh, and, and both of these committees work together to form the steering committee. The steering committee is responsible for all the decisions that take place, uh, for all the activities that is going on. And it's also accountable for all the uh, for, for all the numbers that you are getting at the end of the year or uh, at, at the end of every four months. Uh, and then we have a, a unique philosophy with us called the philosophy of a boat rower, a manji, as we say it in a local language. So we have a pool of manjis and a pool of advisory committee where we have the people who are no more young or who have been in the steering committee and are uh, out of the steering committee. And there are new people taking up. So they always need some advice. And we have the membership pool. So all of these work in harmony to form a chapter in Pakistan. The next slide, please. The organizational structure. Okay, so this is one thing that, um, uh, that I'm very proud of when it always comes up and I'm, and I'm flaunting up over here in this, in this slide as well. So um, it, this is something that um, uh, helped us find uh, which part is going under which jurisdiction. Um, so we somehow found out, okay, so we need some money to run the chapter. How is that going to happen? Since we are starting from scratch up, um, who are going to be entrusted to sponsor us? Who is going to talk to the sponsors? Who is going to talk to the secretariat? Who will be talking to the university campuses? So all of this is, you know, summarized in this one picture. And whenever there's a problem that is coming up, we are just taking out our basic documentation and telling, okay, this is the thing that I have to do. And this is the thing that you have to do. The next slide, please. So this is 
how the first team looks like and the arrows are actually me and the other people reaching out to us. So at first it was me and then I brought in another three people with, with me. And so there were, there's always going to be one person in your team who is going to be extra vocal and he's going to, or he or she is going to spread out the word for all of the people out there. So um, there was one person, two person, and they started gathering people. And so we, we made our team, we found out the interests of the people. Um, and we gave them those particular roles. Uh, we also initiated an open call on our social media pages. And um, I cannot be more surprised and excited to see the response of the people. You just need to, you just need to get out and tell the people that this is what, what we are doing. Are you interested to join us? And then wait for the results to pour in. And the good news is that there will be results. Uh, and then uh, this phase ends when we are trying to pull the people in. There are instances and then there uh, are phases where the people approach us to be pulled in, to be in the uh, managing positions. Um, this is just a, just a snapshot of how my team, how a beautiful, amazing team looks like. The next slide, please. Systems are very important for any, any network of people to, to run. And since you are making a chapter, you should be prepared and ready to have many people with many different backgrounds, engineering, technology, social sciences, law, governance on board with you. So just try to uh, be open with all of these inputs and ideas. Of course, you are not making a chapter to work in a silo. You're making a chapter to increase the, the talk of water, uh, to attain the SDG in your own country, to make the voice of young water pro professionals counted. So be, uh, and so, it is very important to document the things down the line so that if there is a change, if there is a shift of motivation, so the next person coming in doesn't have to do all it again and they have sufficient time to, to read the documents and start where it was left at. You have to be transparent and vocal uh, because you, are, you will be the founding committees and uh, you should be very much clear about what you want to achieve and you have to be transparent about it. You should let the people know what they're expected to do and the outcomes they wish. Expectation management is an important task when you are in a leading position. Tell them that you want to uh, want them to be at the end uh, of their ten tenure and what you want the chapter to be at the end of your tenure. The next slide. And you have to enjoy the process, of course. Um, do not do not delve much deeper into the documentation. There are amazing people in the sec secretariat who are there for uh, to to help you out. They will give you feedbacks, incorporate those feedbacks, learn from the process, network, and preach to the network, and attach yourself to a cause. Make up your own philosophy, uh, and and then there is no compromising once you have initiated a system. Because if you as the governing, uh, sorry, if you as the founding members will compromise on any system, then you do not expect any other person to follow it religiously. So. Accept unsolicited and solicited reviews and always be responsive to the people. And finally, go and start a chapter. That's what it is. The next slide. You can follow us on, on many of the socials because there are a lot of them. So there's a link tree for, 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 for those socials. And here's a QR code for our yearly report. So you can see how we ran our chapter for the past year. We are fairly a new chapter. It's been a year and it's been an amazing year. Thank you. Thank you, Anik, for your amazing presentation. So I would like to invite Anya. Are you ready to present some of the information about the South African chapter? Yes, I am. Hi, everyone. Sorry, my, my camera's at the bottom of my laptop, which always confuses me. Um, thank you so much for that presentation from um, Pakistan chapter. Um, yeah, good to know how to start a chapter. I think ours is going to be slightly different. Ours is going to be how do you keep a YWP chapter going? Um, so you can go to the next slide, Isabella. Thank you. So we've been around in South Africa for a long time. We actually started in 2008. We were one of the first Iowa chapters um, to form um, in the countries. So in 2008, I was 16 and I definitely was not thinking about whether I was gonna be a water professional or join a professional body one day. So I can't say exactly how they started it. Um, but I know that the people that did start it are all really big names in the water sector. And yeah, there's been a really great kind of flow of YWPs. We've been in the committee and have gone on to do really successful things in their careers. So we're currently on our eighth term of, as a committee. Um, each term runs for two years. Our previous committee was chaired by Ashton, 
was actually now the vice lead for the Iowa Emerging um, Leaders Committee. So yeah, got some really close links there. And we also have a long history in the national and international water sector. And I put two parent organizations there because we do actually report to two organizations. Um, we have Iowa who represents our international, um, our links to the international community. But then we also report to the Water Institute of Southern Africa, which is the, the, the official body um, in South Africa. So we do a lot of we do a lot of work with both those organizations. Okay, next slide, please. Thanks. So I just want to run through um, some of the things that I think have kept our chapter going all these years. And what I think would be really useful um, to empower other chapters. And then I'll also run through um, some of the lessons we've learned and how you can keep a, a, a chapter active and alive. Because um, it does always need to be innovation and rethinking things, otherwise it will um, eventually die out. So I'm gonna take you what we call the three um, value adds of YWP. And before I start, I just wanna say, you've always gotta think what will bring value to the people on your committee. So bring value to people who serve on the committee as well as YWPs in your country. And that's something you should really reassess on an annual basis. You know, are we giving them what they want? Um, are we providing the necessary skills? Are we, you know, um, supporting them in the sector in the country? So constantly question the value add. And then based on that, these are kind of the six value adds that we came out with. Next slide, please. Okay, so the first one, which is probably the most important one, is the biannual conferences. So that's been YWP's really the kind of central um, event in action since 2010. So our first conference was held in Chuane and attracted over 330 delegates. It was pretty impressive for the first YWP conference. And since then, we've tried to host one every two years. Um, you saw the photo earlier on from Jacob. We had the 2017 International Iowa YWP conference in Cape Town, which is really exciting. Um, and we had our last conference in Durban in 2019. So this really attracts a huge amount of delegates and it's where people get to know about Iowa and YWP. I, I found out about um, YWP attending the 2015 conference in Chuane. So I think as a committee, this is really something that we see brings a lot of value, not only to ourselves, but also to our members and those in the country. You'll see we didn't have one in 2021. Um, I'm gonna be talking a little bit later about the impacts of COVID and what happened there, but we are busy planning our next one for, um, for this year. So yeah, that's our, definitely our number one value add. Next slide, please. Our second value add um, is the focus on our provincial and national committees. So we're a very large committee. I know that not all um, um, YWP branches are like this, but we have our national committee which consists of various roles, including lead, vice lead, marketing lead, finance lead, and coordination lead. But sitting on our, on our national committee, we also have the provincial leads. So a big focus of YWP in South Africa is to really grow the provinces. And each of the provinces have their own um, committees that follow the same structure as the national committee. And it depends year, year by year. At the moment, we have where the, the arrows are shown in blue. Those are the provinces that I have active um, YWP chapters and it changes based on um, whether people want to start it up um, and whether there's enthusiasm. But um, those those provinces you, that I've shown there have kind of been the ones that have really been going strong since 2008, and I've always had activities going. So I think that is a really big value add for us is being able to do activities on the ground and to also then give more leadership opportunities to the provinces. So instead of just having a national committee. We also then have opportunities for the, to grow the provincial committees where people can get opportunities to practice their leadership skills and finance skills, et cetera. Um, so really would recommend um, trying to transform your chapter into one where it focuses also on the provinces or on a local level. Okay, so our third value add, and I've put, I've put these two together, I have two slides, but it's you know, really our focus on personal and technical development. And this again links back to our strong focus that we have on on the provincial teams and the work that they do. So up until 20, when was COVID, 2020, um, most of our activities actually happened in person in the different provinces. So the national committee was actually really just supporting um, the, 
the provincial committees to roll out their action. It was only when COVID hit and everything moved online that we started moving towards more of a national side. Um, but this was just an example of some of the kind of personal development um, activities that we've offered over the years. Um, career fairs have been a really big thing, um, both at universities and high schools. Um, so that's been a, um, we've tried to do that and it's really helped also kind of grow the, the water sector. And then also just you know, how to sell yourself, how to develop, develop a CV. Another program that we started when, in partnership with Green Matter and a few other, um, a few other um, companies was in Belisi, which is the Envirapreneur program. So encouraging development and you know, fostering Envirapreneurs in the country. Next slide. So in the same line with that, um, our focus is both on the technical development side, but also, sorry, personal development side, which I just showed, but also the technical development side. So a big focus of ours has always been doing technical tours to um, wastewater treatment plants, water treatment works. We actually last, was it last year or the year before we did a hike up Table Mountain to look at the dams um, that's, that used to supply water to the city of Cape Town and hear about the history of water supply in the city of Cape Town. So anything that allows you to go out and actually see um, you know, on the ground what, um, what the situation is. And that's been really, really valuable for our YWPs because I think a lot of YWPs sit in the office and won't always get to see um, you know, water in action. So our kind of our technical tours and our hikes and whatever we do has been really important. We also then, in terms of technical development, cover, I want to, I want to say, the, the softer technical side. So, um, you know, encouraging YWPs to look at sustainability goals. And this example I gave here on the right um, at the WISA conference was a group of engineers, most of whom had never heard about the SDGs or weren't interested in them. And it was actually a really great opportunity to also bring that technical kind of expertise inside out um, to a very technical group and show them you know, the importance of sustainable development. Okay, so our fourth value add is on creating a community and network. Just a couple of photos from all of our provinces. Again, we, um, we don't keep it too serious. We also have fun. We sometimes get together and don't even talk about water and just get to know each other. Um, there at the bottom, you'll see Ashton and myself and Lloyd, who was the chair of the 2019 Iowa conference in Cape Town. We, we're all based in Cape Town, so that was just that was us just getting together for a drink one evening to catch up. Um, yeah, so we really put a big focus on ensuring that wide of peace feel like they're part of a community and part of a network. And we have a very active social media page. We have a very active LinkedIn page, um, and we you know put out regular publications with um, the Wasa magazine, which is the water and sanitation magazine of Wisa, and we really enc encourage in person meeting whether it's for you know to discuss water related aspects or just to get to know each other and that photo on the top left was um they did a tour to a, a brewery um looking at the use of waste or the, the use of water for beer making and then they finished that off with a, um, a social event so you really really want to create a community and a space where people can feel like friends and family and ashton actually got me into the habit of of starting my emails with dear YWP family, um, just to kind of highlight the importance that we're not just colleagues, we're not just working together, we're actually a very strong knit family and network. Uh, Anya, sorry, our time's up. Uh, can you oh, conclude? Shoot. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, sorry. <laughs> sorry, go on. Okay, giving back to the community, I won't um, go into details, I'll go on to the, the way forward section. Okay, so lessons learned. So um, we had a really presented with a really interesting time during COVID that we did need to rethink how we ran YWP and how it looked like. Um, so I think, you know, we really realized then that it is important to have in-person collaboration and networking and that we needed to grow our provincial chapters. We also realized that just because our organization had been around for a very long time, didn't mean that we all always had the same shared vision and aim. And it was really important for us as a committee to kind of start from the bottom again and say, why are we here? What do we actually want to achieve? What are our focus areas of change? So just because you've been around for a long time doesn't mean that you, you shouldn't start thinking of it from the start. And then finally, just the need to empower a new generation of leaders. So my committee that I am part of now, we're a brand new committee, very few people actually know about IWA and YWP. 
and, and that was because we didn't manage to bring a lot of the old committee over. So it's really important while you're in your committee to really start empowering the next generation of leaders who will take over um, from your Iowa YWP committee. Okay, uh, next slide. I think that's it for me. Thank you, Anya. So once we had this overview about the, the process of creating a chapter and also maintaining the chapter, I would like to invite Chen Li to present some of the examples that we have for membership engagement with the China chapter. Uh, thank you, Isabella. Uh, my name is Chen Li, one of the member of IWA YWP steering committee and also vice chair of uh, China chapter. So today I'm going to talk a, a little bit about the membership uh, engagement and give some examples from uh, China chapter. So next. So first of all, I would like to start with how did China chapter start? Uh, you can see this photo. It was taken um, in 2012, yeah, 11 years ago in Nanjing. You can see the man in the middle of the photo. He's our first chair, the first chair of uh, China chapter. Uh, at that time, he, want to, he wanted to create an influential platform for the young people in China. Uh, in China, then he contacted with the um, the, the regional director of uh, Greater China Region um, of IWA, Dr. Tao Li, and he just talked with Tao and talked the, his idea about to create an IWA branded chapter, and he got the great support from Tao. Then he invited another 10 people to be the management committee. They have a meeting to discuss the goals and the work plan of China chapter. Then after that meeting, they took this memorable photo. And from that time, um, they are uh, committed to creating a network for young water professionals to exchange water knowledge nationally and internationally and build bridge among young people from academia and industry and stimulating professional growth of young water professionals. Okay, next. Uh, then after after 11 years growth of a uh, China chapter, the member has increased from you know 11 members to 170. Every year we will recruit 20 to 40 new members and to maintain the membership of around 170, but uh, you know, every year we receive more than 50 applications. So it's a big challenge for us to determine who will be more uh, qualified because we think they are all very excellent. Uh, of, of course, we uh, encourage the female and the members from industry to join us in China chapter. Uh, 30% of the members are female and 13 members are from industry. Uh, okay, please next slide. Okay, you can see uh, this is the overview of the management committee um, 2022 to 2024. We work in different working groups and um, that responsible uh, responsibility for uh, each each uh, event, each activity, and we meet each other uh, online two to four weeks and to have our regular meeting to discuss the uh, recent work plan and to ensure, okay, everything is running smoothly. Uh, then I will share some um, influential activities uh, held, we held in recent years. So the first one um, that we do believe is a very important one is our annual meeting. We started our annual meeting from 2013 and we have successfully held nine times uh, last year. It marks our a 10th year anniversary, but unfortunately, you know, due to the COVID, we have to, uh, we had to host this uh, annual meeting online. But um, it's also a chance for us to invite the IWA executive um, director, Kala, and our uh, chair of IWA YWP steering committee, Jacob, to join us and they uh, give us an opening 
uh, uh, address to uh, to to celebrate our annual uh, anniversary at that meeting, and we also invite some top experts in China, including the the former uh, chairs and the vice chairs of China chapter, to deliver uh, wonderful speeches uh, with the title of uh, carbon emission reduction and young water professionals uh, development. And the next one is the Racing Star Award, uh, yeah, powered by Capital Echo Pro Group, initiated by our chapter in uh, 2017. And until now, 48 young water professionals have received this award in recognition of their outstanding contributions to China's water sector. And now the nomination are open for the Rising Star Award uh, 2023. This year, nine young water professionals will be uh, awarded, and the final winner list will be announced during uh, our annual meeting, which will be held in Beijing this August. Uh, okay, next. Um, the next one is the YWP seminar series on campus. As I mentioned, many of our former members has grown into the senior, uh, outstanding senior water professionals. So we want to build a bridge between them and uh, the young people, especially the uh, master student and doctor students. So we initiate this um, the, this uh, activity from uh, uh, three years ago, and we have successfully organized in different in several universities. And uh, for each seminar, we invite four or five um, senior uh, water professionals to share their experience and uh, engage with young students. Uh, uh, yeah, so uh, I think it's a good way to strengthen the communication between senior and YWPs. Okay, next. Uh, okay, uh, this is the Industry Academia uh, Corporation. We have organized four workshops to provide opportunities to uh, for the uh, communication and collaboration among the members from uh, both uh, uh, industry and academia to promote the closer integration of the industry and university research. The next one is an international webinar on content sharing of the IWA World Congress in Copenhagen. We initiated this activity last year. Um, you know, the, uh, in the IWA Congress was successfully held last in Copenhagen last year, but due to the COVID, our a Chinese member almost got no chance to attend uh, in person. So we think maybe we can do something to enable them to know what happened in Copenhagen. And so we contacted with um, an IWA board member, also uh, he's a professor in my university. He got some video record from uh, IWA and, and including the opening and closing ceremony and the um, keynote speech. And we worked together to edit these videos in proper form and add Chinese, added Chinese subtitles. Then we share these videos with Chinese uh, water professionals. And we organize a, total, a totally 10 webinars. All webinars are live streamed on 10 um, online channels and attracting more then 8,000 audience for uh, each webinar. And uh, you see, I, see, I, I showed um, webinar seven, the, the, the theme is Uniting Youth for Water. So I invite Jacob and Ines to, to join us because Ines is a keynote speaker um, of the plenary in Copenhagen and Jacob is the moderator of the pan, uh, panel discussion. We invite them to join us and share the experience on uh, people in uh, down on the um, youth engagement. And it's it has, uh, I, I do believe it has great impact in uh, China's water sector. So uh, we think if possible this year, we would like to organize that kind of webinars to let more young water professionals to know what is happening in the global uh, water sector. Okay. Uh, okay, that's all what I want to share today. Thank you.
Thank you, Chen, for your presentation about the YWP China chapter. So without further delay, I will hand over to Shotaro. He will be explaining about some of the examples of membership engagement in the Japan chapter. Shotaro. Okay, thank you very much for Isabella to introducing me. And hello, everyone. My name is Shotaro Goto from Japan chapter member, and as well as the one of the IWA steering committee. Four amazing four speakers have already explained how to create chapter and what kind of events each chapter is doing. So in my presentation, I want to focus on not only the activities on Japanese chapter, but also what are the benefits to create new chapter for us. So firstly, I want to explain the IWA YWP Japan chapter itself. In our chapter, have about five active, no, five members. And in more detail, 50% come from the private sector, like uh, water industry company or pipe maker, et cetera. But 30% from educational institutions and 20% from the public sector. And last year, fiscal 2021, we have five online events. However, before COVID-19, we had more face-to-face -face event and also workshop. And as you can see this picture, Japan YWP established in March 2010 with the support of IWA Japan National Committee. As same as South African chapter, Japan chapter is also one of the oldest chapter in my understanding. And we have been active for more than 10 years and compare it to the past, I hear that the number of members of our, of our chapter is increasing now. Go to the next slide. And this slide explained one of the biggest events implemented by Japan YWP in 2020, before the COVID, Japan YWP chapter organized a face-to-face -face event with more than 100 participants to celebrate its 10th anniversary and it was a great opportunity for networking across generations. This is very important point, I think. I mean that, so some of participants were high school students. On the other hand, some of them were famous professor. So we have created a unique opportunity for people who are difficult to interact with each other in general. Also this slide explained that one of the unique events organized by both YWP Philippines and YWP Japan, we held three exchange online events in 2022. And in this event, we discussed that, for example, water related issues such as the water regulations and threat management. And through this event, we were able to learn about each other's case studies which was a valuable opportunity for me, for example, because I'm really interested in the water and sanitation situation in other countries. So without the IWA community, I think this opportunity would not have been possible. This is my last slide. So I'd like to explain why this community is attractive for us. In my sense, the one of the best point is that to be able to make connections within the water industry, nationally and internationally. As I explained, in Japan YWP, we can get relationship across generations in national level. And also we can make relationships with other countries such as Philippines. These connections will help an important role for our future career. In particular, I think, since the community has chapters all over the world, we can get relationship around the world. So if you have a new chapter in your country, I would like to connect with your chapter as well as a Japan chapter. Thank you very much hope, uh, and hope your country makes the chapter successfully. Thank you, Shotaru, for your presentation on this. Since we concluded with all the presentations, I would like to invite all the speakers to be on camera so we can go over with this Q&A uh, session. 
And for the participants, feel free to post your question in the chat. I will be collecting all of them. Let me stop sharing my screen so we can see each other. Yes, perfect. So uh, I believe that we already received a question in the chat for, for Anik. Anik, uh, Ayuba mentioned, how do you mobilize resources to function your operations? Um, thank you so much, Yuba. Thank you, Isabella, for extending the question to me. Um, uh, so this is a very, uh, the, I mean, the trickiest part for any chapter that how do you mobilize the resources to uh, function the chapter. And of course, this certainly means getting enough finances to make the chapter running and all of these things. So we opted for um, a very um, uh, in-kind model for our re resources. Um, in our steering committee, we held meetings where we sat and we thought, what are the resources we need the money for? For example, we need to have Zoom meetings longer than 40 minutes of time. So we need a Zoom that is longer than 40 minutes and a premium version. So we need the money for this. So why not ask for the Zoom itself? So we reached out to the people, the sponsors, and one of the sponsors got it for us and we shared it with them. We, should, we said that, okay, you, you have, you have uh, bought us this premium version, but for any meetings that you want to hold, you, you can do that too on the same plat platform. So um, we, we, we have to find out the gaps that we have in terms of finances. Being a new chapter, it is very difficult to, to, uh, to create trust among the people right away that they trust you with their money. So of course it is important to first set the ball rolling get the in-kind uh, re resources and try to work with the minimum resources you have. Social media is free. You can use it. It's, it's absolutely fun to use it. And, um, uh, and yeah, that, that, that's how we are up until now uh, mobilizing our resources. Thank you, Anik. Since this question about resources is really interesting, I would like also to pass uh, to Anya if she can share some input from the chapter. I'm going to be myself. So we um, get a lot of our resources through our local partners. So we partner with, for example, the Department of Water and Sanitation, which is our national um, water provider. Um, so we've really, over the years, been building up really strong relationships. So it's it's not just DWS, it's Rand Water, it's the city of Cape Town, it's any of the kind of government agencies. And they've been a really big um, funder and supporter of what we do, especially for the conference. Um, throughout the year, you know, our, our operational costs are quite low. Um, there are some things we need to um, we need to cover, and that does come out of a kind of a budget that we have been, you know, um, growing over the years. But for the bigger events like the conferences and any um, technical tours, we work with um, sponsors. And I think, yeah, it's it's it does take a while. I think we have spent many years nurturing those relationships. And so we do have very good contacts. We are known in the water sector, but I, I, I have full trust that Pakistan will also get there. You know, um, it just takes it just takes a bit of time and a bit of a bit of um, networking and conversations. But yeah, it's definitely achievable. Thank you, Anya, on this. Um, Chen and Shotaro, do you have um, any information that you like to add regarding this uh, financial support with the chapter? Uh, yeah, I, I want, just want to say uh, something, you know, in China chapter, 30% of our members are from industry and even in our management committee, there are three members from industry. So to be honest, I want to say, yeah, they make great contributions <laughs> to the financial support. <laughs> yeah, and for example, um, when, when we organize our annual meeting every year, um, uh, yeah, uh, they will give some uh, financial support. And uh, in another way, um, the if we uh, cooperate with the university, uh, the, the university will also give some uh, financial support. And uh, we just need to list the university as a co-organizer, <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Chen. Shotaro, do you have something to add for this rel uh, in relation to this question? Shotaro, I think that you're frozen. But I see that Anya has her hands up. Thanks. That was a really important point that was raised that I didn't mention. Um, you know, in terms of support, it doesn't always have to be financial. 
but it's great to get financial contributions. But like we saw with the other example, it's also the in-kind contribution. So if you are hosting a conference or a workshop, you know, um, partnering with the university you can give you the um, the location or the you know the building for free is a great way to kind of get sponsorship but not actually involve money. So try and explore also ways that you can partner with other um, with other organizations, public or private, for this in, this in kind sponsorship. Thank you, Anya. And for those that were asking about chapters, please feel free to reach out to me so I can put you in contact with um, the chapter shares that we have. Because I saw a message about Bolivia and India in the chat. So yes, we already have chapters established there. Also, we have a chapter in Sri Lanka. So feel free to drop me a message and I will put you in contact with the, with the chair. Um, we received a question from Talia from the Morocco YWP chapter. What is the best advice could you give to us since we are just remembers and our resources are quite limited? So they are the babies in terms of the chapters. Maybe Anik can take this one? Yeah, sure. Um, I, I'm just trying to find out where the question is. <laughs> um, it, it is from Talha, right? Yes, yeah, from the Morocco chapter, okay, the, our newest. Okay. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Congratulations for the Morocco chapter for bombing and set the ball rolling. Um, and our sources, are, resources are quite limited. So uh, that is very much relatable. I can see myself in your shoes back then, for sure. Um, we, uh, you're just three members and that's the best part because uh, you guys can reach decisions very quickly, first of all. The second thing is that those are the three people that you do not want to leave throughout your time because these three people trusted you in making the chapter and these are the three people who actually um, got into the idea of making uh, and doc documenting the whole chapter. The resources are always quite limited for any chapter that is new, for anything that is new. Um, the International Water Association was not something that I heard from my university itself, even though my public university is more over 100 years old. Um, so we need to we need to make make the noise right now. And once the people get to know that, OK, there is something like this, then the resources will start coming themselves. I would share an example of how I got one of the resources. So right after my, uh, uh, the Copenhagen um, World Water Congress uh, last September, um, when I was in Denmark still, I received a call that there is a conference happening and I really wanted to be a part of that conference. And there's a conference happening and uh, they have seen the post that, uh, that Iva and my team had shared uh, on LinkedIn and social media and they had one slot empty for, for the conference. So they, they gave us the venue and they wanted to bring the young people onto, uh, onto the podium and talk, talk about how to bring the dialogues of water into, into Pakistani context. So um, these, these are the resources that you do not want to let go. So right after I landed back to Pakistan, I went for a meeting, I signed the deal off, I said, okay, we'll do this chapter, we'll do this, we'll do this, we'll do this. And we, we, we spread out our first e event without any, any money in, in our pockets, to be very honest. So this is how we actually got, got it up. Sometimes it's like you see um, an opportunity for investment. So you might want to, um, to, to treat your three people with some lunch sometime, but that's, that's how it you, usually is going to work out. Thank you, Anik, for your explanation for this. Um, Anya, we received a question regarding uh, setting provincial, uh, provincial representatives in a YWA chapter. Since uh, the South African chapter, they have these provincial representatives. Uh, would you be able to provide any insights on this? So is that an insight, if I read it correctly, in the importance of having provincial representatives? Yes, exactly. Um, so yeah, as you saw, I, I skipped the last two slides of my presentation, but most of our activities happen in the provinces. And to really make that happen, we do need teams on the ground um, who, who run those activities. So our provinces each, I mean, they each probably have about six or seven committees, um, six or seven people in their own committee. And I think that's really where, you know, the strength of those ha operations happen because it wouldn't be able to happen from a national level. We just don't have the capacity to organize 
those kind of events and that level of events. I mean, if I, if I look at, you know, KwaZulu Natal, they've already done three events this year, an outreach program, a technical tour, you know, so there's a lot happening and you really need people on the ground to be able to drive that. So it's very important to have strong teams there. And like I said, what we do is we have the provincial chairs all then sit on the national committee. So we make sure that whatever is decided on the national committee, um, you know, it gets fed through to the provincial committees through the chairs. So I would really yeah, emphasize the importance of having um, local provincial committees. I think you're on mute. Uh, yeah, thank you, Anya, on this. Uh, Anik and Shotaro, do you have um, any information that you want to add for this question? Um, I can add something onto it uh, because um, in our organizational structure, we don't have provincial committees. So it is very important that you see um, your country, the demographics of your own country, and uh, see where is the big chunk lying. If it is very much spread out, if it's a big country, then of course you have to have people, you, you, you have to have people given authority to do something on their own. Uh, but if uh, the, there is a disproportionate distribution of young professionals and people in general inside your own country, then of course it is more important to, uh, to seek a strategic way to find out how you can engage more and more people. So that was the case in, in, in our country. And um, we've just found out that university chapters could be a great way to um, able to enable the students uh, on bachelor's level and the postgraduate level uh, to form a chapter in their campuses and to spread the word that way. Uh, so yeah, um, in our cases, it was the university chapter that we are focusing more on rather than the geographical representation of uh, the chapter itself. Thank you, Anik. Shotaro, do you have something to add? From my side, so I don't have the, any comments about that. Okay, thank you, Shotaro. Let me see if we have received more more questions in the chat. Um, so again, for those that are interested in joining a chapter, please drop me a message on my email so I can put you in contact with the chapter. We do have chapters in Ghana, India, uh, Sri Lanka, Nigeria, Bolivia. These are the ones that I'm seeing in Nepal. Um, let me see if we received another question. Uh, I think that's, that's all that I can see here. If you have any questions, please feel free to, to post it here in the chat. We do have time for another question on this. Let me see if I missed something. Chien and Chotaro, do you have any comments, final comments? Um, yeah, from my side, I just want to say thank you to the speakers. Thank you for sharing your experience on how to create a, a IWLB chapter. And to the participants, um, I want to say if you have any questions, feel free to contact with us and send an email. Like, okay, you can find, find our email address on the IWA website. Feel free to send, send email to us, okay. And um, thank you, Chen. I can see that we received two questions. Uh, a general question um, from Ayuba, was this meeting extended to all chapters? Yes, it was. It was widely disseminated among uh, the IWA network. And then we received a question regarding do chapter from different neighborhoods, countries collaborate. Shatara, I think that this one is, is good for you <laughs> about collaboration among <coughs> chapters. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. Actually, I'm really interested in the collaboration. And in Japan chapter, so we actually discuss among chapters, among chapter committee members, how we uh, collaborate with chapter, uh, with other chapters, right? Philippines, and also we are thinking to Germany or any other European chapters. 
But finally, we decided to collaborate to the Philippine chapter. This is because it's the geographically near and in the more practical level, Japan and Philippines, we have a lot of collaborations. For example, Japanese organization gives some the knowledge of the infrastructure and also university students from Philippines is learning in the Japanese university. That's why for practical reason, finally we decided to connect more to the Philippine chapter. But hopefully we want to make more and more connections. So if you want to, if you have the interest to collaborate with Japan chapter, please let me uh, please let me know. I want to collaborate as much as possible. Thank you, Shotaro. So thank you everyone for your questions on this. We are running yeah, I, out of time. <laughs> Almost. Hi, oh, I, sorry, I have the one question. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I have a question to the Pakistan chapter. And actually the Pakistan, in my understanding, Pakistan chapter is one of the newest chapter. And my question is, what is the future career in the Pakistan chapter? Like, because just now you make the chapter. So one or two years later, what kind of activity you want to do? Or five years later, what kind of activity you want to do? I'm really interested because you are very active. Thank you, Shotaru. Um, I, 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 I guess I can answer this, Isabella, can I? Okay, so um, that is a very difficult question, of course, where do you ask someone to forecast what they are seeing uh, for themselves in the future? Um, yeah, we are currently uh, looking forward, since we have gathered a network, so we, we, we have gathered enough people to make an impact on the communities. Now we are transferring a focus towards communities and we are trying to functionalize the very university ambassadors and campus chapters to find out certain call to actions that they need in their own local spaces for example the problem in my city might not be the problem in the capital of a con country of course so we are just nudging them to this end that they bring us the problems and we try to talk about it and we try to see how can we solve that problem and what is the level of activism of youth that is required into it because most of the problems do not even require financial intervention they only require activities so we are trying to make community impact from now on and we are trying to uh, talk to our governments and uh, we and um, what one one of our highest aim of the chapter is to uh, is to make a space in our country that is net water zero completely cir circular and we want to create a model uh, for other peoples to see and look at it, that this can be done as well, and by the people who are 35 years and younger. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, it's very interesting. Actually, so Japan chapter also collaborate to the uh, more like the government, oh, but uh, currently it's very difficult for me. But if you are successfully doing, I want to, I want to know how to do that. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Anik and Shotaro. Anya, I see that you have your hands up. So this has to be the final comment because we are totally out of time and I have to wrap up. It was actually a hand from a while ago. It was just on ah. collaborating with other, with other <laughs> chapters. Um, but I think it's really important. So we've had engagements, for example, with Zambia, Mozambique, and Lesotho, all who are interested in starting their own chapters. And, um, I think it's really important to not only collaborate with existing chapters, which is also great, um, but to also really reach out to other countries that you know of. And I'm, I'm, I'm glad to see that there's been a question about Zambia because I would like to take the conversation forward. So please reach out to your neighboring countries and yeah, help them um, set up their own chapters. Thank you, Anya. So let me quickly share my screen again. Since I can see that we are all interested in getting to know more young water professionals and get involved with the community, I would like to invite you to attend our next two get togethers. The first will be focused on some of the key message from the UN Water Conference. It will be highlighting perspectives from Latin America and the Caribbean. This event is going to be hosted in English, uh, sorry, in Portuguese and Spanish, and there will be no translation for English. 
The next one will be the engagement of YWPs in IWA specialist groups. And this one is going to be on English. And the other opportunity for you to engage with IWA is to attend the meeting uh, in partnership with Prime Water that will be focused on end users of outlook to earth or observations. And finally, I would like to, to remind about our upcoming uh, Water and Development Congress and exhibition that will be hosted in Kigali in Rwanda um, December this year. And the call for workshops and paper submission is open until the end of this month. So you have the QR code, do we scan it? Because this is another good opportunity to connect with other YWPs and be part of this amazing community that we have it. And if you wanna join our network, please use the discount code that you can see in our slide. So you can receive 20% off in discount for a new membership. And again, if you have any questions regarding the community or if you want to connect with other members and other chapters, I have shared, shared my email address. Feel free to reach out to me. I do reply to my emails and I'm no, I'm no uh, someone that sends a lot of messages <laughs> to all of the members. <laughs> And once again, thank you for joining and thank you for the speakers for being part of this.